Well, hello and welcome. I'm Hannah. And I'm Alex Absalom. And uh, we, in the last couple of weeks, have had some unexpected news, which has uh, yeah, been quite interesting to process. So, um, so some of you might have known or heard that Alex's voice has not been quite its usual strength. He's normally got a very strong, loud voice. Mm-hmm. And in the last 18 months or so, it, it, you found it really hard to project. So you've been to various doctors and mm-hmm. ENTs who said you've got a vocal nodule. And, we, and event, eventually you referred to a top doctor yep. top doctor in la um when you go to his offices he's got signed sharpie you know sharpie signed photos of extremely well-known actors like i guarantee you know them even i know them even i know some extremely well-known singers you would definitely know them so he's a top 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 guy lovely man very so kind he, so, so, he, he, so he operated on me to remove what he thought was a vocal nodule turned out that um it was actually something unusual and he really did a great job persevering. So I have some cancer on my vocal cords. So we wanted us to uh, reflect a little bit about this journey that we're on, uh, because you hear the C word and you know you slightly freak out and all that stuff. Uh, but we want to think about, well, how do we respond as believers in that moment? Uh, what does it mean to walk with Jesus in, in that situation? How do you combine faith and yet Oh, I'll say realism in air quotes, because uh, faith is real as well, but it's that kind of dynamic that you're kind of resting mm-hmm. with as you go through this situation. Um, so just super practically, because I'm sure you'd want to know, uh, so as we're filming today, we're in this in-between zone. I've actually recovered really well from the surgery. They did mm-hmm. re- remove a big growth, which has made my voice so much better. So yes, it's almost back to normal. It still gets sore and stuff, doesn't it? But the volume, I don't know if you can tell now, but the volume is almost back to normal. Well, lucky you, eh? Hallel- <laughs> well, mostly, hallelujah. Uh, so that's good. Um, Surgery is painful because I scraped out various things in my throat. But that that's all coming back. That's all good. Uh, I'm waiting to get a full body scan and then they'll work out what treatments to come. Um, But what we wanted to start to talk about is how do you respond in moments like that? We don't want to sound glib, Mm -hmm. don't sound... uh, Trite. Trite, Pollyanna-ish. You know, everything's going to be fine, it'll all be good, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, so, I mean, the Lord does have a plan, uh, but sometimes people say that stuff and it's not actually super helpful when people say it like that. So... uh, But we don't want to navel gaze and, oh, woe is me either. Correct. So I think one th- one of the things that we found found useful is to really try and come before the Lord with gratitude and thanksgiving. We're actually going to talk. We're going to do several videos, so we'll probably talk a bit about this next time. But one of the things the Lord did with me was the morning after this surgery. Um, I was back home and I had lots of exciting drugs, so I didn't really feel like getting up terribly early. So I was lying in bed and just you know coming to, and I felt the Lord invite me to think about all the people I'd interacted with the day before at the hospital and I went through that whole experience and I counted 19 people I'd talked with or, and they talked with me and every single one of them was lovely they were all just mm-hmm. really kind and helpful and compassionate people and I felt the Lord say well thank me for that and I think it was a resetting of just make sure I, I come with a spirit of gratitude and thankfulness to him because it's easy to kind of get wrapped up in a where was me and mm. pity parties and you know, it's so unfair and all that stuff. And, and as we'll, we'll process with you, we don't think that's a healthy place to be. Mm. But you want to be realistic, you know, mm-hmm. you, there's been some emotions and all that mm-hmm. stuff. But I think it's, we can make choices along the way as well. So mm-hmm. one of those is, is coming like that. Mm-hmm. So how, what are the emotions that you've been feeling? I mean, I, we have different emotions to an extent, but you know, how have you worked through those emotions without going to either extreme? So, surprise. Mm -hmm. Uh, more teary than normal I think nobody expects it's probably almost always a surprise I would imagine yeah and it wasn't what they'd expected so we weren't even kind of half prepared for it it wasn't on our radar no Um, I think um, there's some anxiety you know what does this mean what could what could the outcome be I think you know which can veer into fear and whatever else Uh, I, I actually feel for me I don't have a fear of um, you know, I, this is not terminal, um, God willing. Well, yeah. um, but I don't think it is at all. But even if it was, I don't actually have a fear of dying. I mean, the process of dying doesn't always sound terribly fun. But I don't think the Lord dealt with that. Not I'm not going to tell the story now. But like 12 years ago, I had a near-death experience where I nearly 
did die. Um, from a heart thing, but anyway, yeah, from yeah. a congenital heart arrhythmia thing. So that's the thing I think the Lord's already dealt with in me. But it was, yeah, it's, it's the kind of, you do have a bit of well, what ifs and there's the kind of the whole journey you've got to go through. Mm -hmm. So I think there's, there's all sorts of emotions swirl around mm -hmm. with that. And then, of course, you then have to communicate to other people. <laughs> so we have three sons, as many of you know, two of them are married. So, you know, we, we had to talk with them and then they have their emotions mm. and of course we're still mum and dad so they're, they're kind of processing with us in, in that situation which is totally cool they've been amazing they've really handled it maturely so again it's how you be real with them without letting anybody go to a place of fear mm. or you know you want to you know encourage faith but mm. not again being mm -hmm. blase mm -hmm. uh we prayer email we can talk about that yeah, so it's, you know, so our kids, our friends and stuff, but then we're thinking, of course, lots of other people are going to want to know. And we're pretty open people, so we're thinking, okay, how many people do we want to proactively tell? And so we thought, actually, we want to tell more people than not, and we decided, we talked it through with your sister, who's a doctor, and she was very good in terms of how you handle it, and mm -hmm. just think through carefully what to do. And um, we thought it would be easier to tell people by text rather than face-to-face because -face, then you've got everybody's emotion in the moment, which is exhausting. Um, and so we actually constructed a text which we sort of modified mm -hmm. um, to all sorts of different people. Mm -hmm. Firstly, because we, we thought, OK, let us get as many people praying as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and so we have felt really loved and supported by the community, but the essence of the email was some facts of this mm -hmm. is a situation we, they think it's a cancer of the yeah. larynx mm -hmm. and they think it's just stage 1b the prognosis is good um so some facts in there but then also some specifics about what we can be mm -hmm. what they could be praying mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. not that we want to say pray for this and this uh, i think there is a general just lift us mm -hmm. up before the lord but sometimes it's helpful and some you know yeah. some prayer points in there yeah. so and then we'll stick that up here yeah, alongside okay. where people are watching because that's that might be a template for people to use sometimes you're not quite sure what to ask for and i think i think when i pray for people i like some specific things to pray that are unique for them that's helpful and you know some practical things about us and the doctors and stuff like that but it's okay how, how do we you know make sure the lord gets the glory through yes. this and yeah. so we we did some stuff and you know some some missional mm -hmm. endeavors that we're wanting to do mm -hmm. at this time and how can we continue doing those so that cancer or mm -hmm. treatment or whatever becomes the focus mm -hmm. we do not want mm -hmm. that and i think the last thing i'd perhaps say for this video it, around response is uh we do view this as some spiritual warfare mm. and so therefore our posture is well if the enemy is going to have a go at me us then we're going to have a go back mm -hmm. so we're going to redouble our efforts to be on mission or to be fruitful for the lord and one of the decisions that uh, we made, I mean, one hand has mentioned, which is we've chosen to be open about it. We feel that's helpful. It's not anything to be embarrassed or ashamed of. Um, and we'll talk in a future video about the power of community. But also we made the decision that there's going to be things that we can do in this time. Mm. So how can, we be, how can we advance God's kingdom in this season? So mm -hmm. if some doorways or opportunities might seem to be harder to do, um, so, uh, you know, unless I'm supernaturally healed, we're not going to travel for a bit and all that stuff um so what are other things we can do and how can we represent jesus really well how can mm -hmm. this be a, a, an experience whereby people um who are not yet saved they see jesus in us more powerfully and that's what we'd hope and some of you might be watching uh, some of our friends and neighbors and you know as you know that's what we'd long for you mm -hmm. as well so uh, so we want it to be have that mindset about it rather than just turning inwards on ourselves mm -hmm. we want it to be how can we actually okay we're battle great let's do a battle then uh, and and really look outwards and upwards yeah. and seek to honor jesus through it all yeah so how can we have this sort of holistic broad mm -hmm. yielded because mm -hmm. obviously it's not a surprise to the lord and he's mm -hmm. got things mm -hmm. he wants to do in this mm -hmm. in us as well as in other people mm -hmm. so it's mm -hmm. just having that yielded posture mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so uh next video we're going to do so next week we're going to talk a bit more about our reflections go a bit deeper into it thinking about how do you how's the faith dynamic come into this uh praying for healing praying for supernatural intervention how does that work mm. in all this sort of mm -hmm. thing as well so mm. um hopefully that'll be useful for you as well and we would love it if you would pray for me yeah. pray for us pray yeah. for our family at this time uh, but more uh, more importantly that we'd pray that the lord's kingdom would advance mm. and that 
it, some of you, you'll be facing big things. Mm-hmm. It might be cancer, it might be another illness, it might be a major situation in your family, in your life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I hope that over these next couple of videos, we can encourage you mm-hmm. that Jesus can work through even a, a big thing like this that feels like a big setback and actually um, God can be glorified and we can draw closer to him mm-hmm. and we can represent him better yeah. and that the kingdom can advance. Yeah, so good. Yeah. yeah. So we'll speak to you soon.